Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 92 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can... Please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. Man with the Humongous <clears throat> Ego, a.k.a. Scotthausen, a.k.a. Scotty Too High, a.k.a. Spanky. And with me, as always, is... Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And before we joined, Scott and I talked about how we are the real podcasters, so... Oh, All the other podcasters suck, so it's good that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because because we we watch the 2024s, and we only come back to the table either when we have no movies or three hours worth of a podcast. So buckle <laughs> in, everybody, because there's no happy medium with Scott and I. Yeah. We don't time things well. Um, <laughs> I feel like we binge, or I binge, because this week I think I watched close to 10 or 12 of the movies that we're presenting tonight, uh, just this week alone. Yeah, I think I'm pretty close to that with you, but that is also because we all of a sudden had a slew of movies that we had access to, too. Yes, we, we finally managed to crack the code. Scott and I put it on our, it was like, what was that movie where they did all the coding and shit what was it called hackers hackers yeah Hack Scott and I made, made hackers too Hack <laughs> it was just us trying to watch horror movies that's all it was for an hour and a half it's coming uncorks picked it up so it should be quite good um <laughs> <laughs> but i could say with these films uh scott as you know a lot of these new 2024 films <laughs> Here we go. Are, 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 we're filmed in the UK. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> Scott, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but I've been to the UK. <laughs> I know. I've never brought it up before. <laughs> what? Oh, if only we did release the video, because Scott is just staring at me, very, very like, shut the fuck up, bitch. No one gives a shit about your trip. <laughs> um. But Scott knew I was going to bring this up because as oh, yeah. we were watching and <laughs> it was one UK film after another, like, I'm like, fuck, how many British films did they pick up this year? in 2024? Lot. Right. And I was like, oh man, Scott's going to want to like throttle me by the end of this. Um, <laughs> which is no different than any other episode that we did. Pretty much. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> not. Um, a shout out to our, our dummies of horror friends because they're doing a really great series right now they're pitting decades up against each other which scott and i don't do that shit anymore <laughs> but i can appreciate the work and i'm currently listening to their 50s versus 70s and uh, i never commented what my favorite 1950s film was because well i'm not as active on facebook as i used to be but it would have been a thing the thing from another world yeah, I think for me it was a tie between Thing from Another World and uh, House on the Haunted Hill. Mm, that's a good one, too. And I think it might have been Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Invasion of Your Mama. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a sequel that we're also going to sell to Uncorked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight. Really for us. <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go. If you're interested in like listening to two sexy studs talk about which generate which de which decade is better you can check that out unfortunately you won't have rob the hump on there um, now he's gonna just be he's gonna be in the background judging all of us you know things are always better with the hump it's true, it's true. i hump the hump all the time i hump the hump too we all hump um humpy humpity hump but yeah so check them out i've really been enjoying that and since we now just talk about new releases, especially today, because, well, that's all we fucking did. So if you like their our swimming pool, I, lived, I listened back to our making fun of Night Swim, and we were quite funny. So hopefully everyone else enjoyed oh. that, because I thought it was hilarious. That fucking movie. <laughs> fucking pool toys. So I went swimming with my niece last did Sunday. Did you throw quarters? She, she even had pool toys. 
like, you didn't throw quarters, Heather? No, and I was like, oh, you know, and we lost one. We lost this little fishy. And she's like, it's okay, Auntie Heather. They're really cheap on Amazon. Even my eight-year-old niece knows that pool toys are available on Amazon for cheap. <laughs> but yet other people fucking do throw quarters. I don't, anyway. Fucking nice. Ruin the damn filters. <laughs> right now we're so old. We're like, those filters. That, that <laughs> shit costs hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands. <laughs> right? Which we don't have. Scott and I are definitely <laughs> would have that. That pool would be nope. staying fucking closed. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, like, I've I've always said I would love a pool, but I would not want to do the work and uh, oh. pay for all the shit that's required for it. Well, and like all the time, liners rip and shit and all that other garbage the that you got to do, right? Then sometimes you get water from an evil stream that you have to right? deal with. Then you, then you have your neighbors jumping in the water and uh-huh. drowning, and then the ghosts come out and like start right? haunting you and shit. You got dumb. some bitch living in your pool, lady in the water. <laughs> you can't get her out. And for some reason, you just can't decide to, like, you know, not swim. You just got to keep right. going. <laughs> right. You got some plastic bag floating around in your water that looks like a plastic bag. But if it gets too close to you, it fucking eats you. <laughs> like, yep. you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Every time I watch that short, I'm like, it looks like a fucking garbage bag. <laughs> Like a yeah. garbage bag that's floating around. What's it called? The raft? I think. Yeah, the raft on Creep Show Two. Creep Show Two. Yeah. I oh, fucking man. love that one though. <laughs> I love it too, but it's like a fucking like. I'm like, well, I guess this was the easiest special effect they could come up with. They just basically, I feel like some garbage floated by. And they were like, oh fuck yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, we do have many movies to cover today, so I guess we'll get right into it because here at Friday Nightmares, we uh. <laughs> We watch 2024s. We don't make excuses like other podcasts do that they can't find any. <laughs> we Jim step Davis. up to the plate. T- translation, we've sucked our way onto many people's plexes, which is why we're able to do this. That's back when we were nice. We faked it. We we gaslit everyone in the horror community. To, to Gaslit. Word of 2023. <laughs> it makes me wonder which one of these films will have gaslit Heather this time. Uh, you know what? You never know with me, Scott. You never oh, know. I know. I, oh, I, I know. <laughs> you never know, right? Like, well, we already know what my top ten is. Spider One's coming out with a film this year. We already know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. So, um, anyway, did you watch this one or no? I can't remember. Uh, which one is Clear Mind? Clear Mind. Yes, yes, I did. I, uh, did I can't w- remember if it was a Tubi original or not. Um, well, it is available on Tubi. Do you want me to bring it in, or do you want to bring it in? Well, since you got the next one, I haven't seen. I will right. cover this one. All uh, right, so bring me, it in. Let me bring the list up real fast. <laughs> All right. So, A Clear Mind is a 85-minute runtime. Uh, tagline is, Revenge is not a multiplayer, multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. A grieving woman uses her virtual reality therapy to exact revenge on her former friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, this movie is... Um movie was interesting it basically is trying to uh talk about grief in a way and how other people handle their grief and there is this mother that lost a daughter right at the beginning and also lost their daughter in a pool (gasps) that's the theme for this year (laughs) (laughs) you know what i watched a lot of pool movies recently so yes this keeps but this is like legit could happen yeah like and the tragedy and i think I'll be real with you, Scott. I don't think this would have hit me as much as it does now because I'm so close to my friend's kids and they're around that age that I can put myself in that situation. Oh, for sure. Like I think of my friend's daughter and like, because I take her swimming all the time, right? And I know how quick something can happen and I never let her out of my sight. But that, I I, I don't think this is going to be, A, I didn't think this was a strong horror film, but um, I do think this is a realistic situation with a pool that at least could happen. Yes. Right? But yeah, like, she is going to like this virtual reality therapy thing that's like this new thing and then decides oh i'm done with this and i'm gonna go meet up with my friends and my ex-husband that were at this pool party they're doing a getaway weekend thing just to kind of kind of reconnect and do everything after everything happened and shit just kind of goes crazy and then i start pulling the little plot holes out and then the ending happens and I'm going, so that's your way of covering up the plot holes. I still don't buy it. It was okay. <laughs> it was, you know, I almost gave a spoiler. I was like, that's not what happened. And I'm like, Oh, right. We're not spoiling this. <laughs> but boy, Scott. 
Um, so right away we see gaslighting has moved into 2024 because I really liked this movie. <laughs> I knew it. Um, now that's to say this is a Heather film. And when I say that, it usually means it has some kind of social message. And I really liked the main actress. I thought her reactions to grief were normal and how someone would react. I appreciated that. I appreciated the friends wanting to move on. Also very realistic. Yep. Um, a lot of blaming. Very realistic. Um, I think it, it does kind of get horrorish at the end, it, you could say. Yeah. And I guess the outcome is. I, yeah. I actually thought that this was, for me, a four out of five. But I can understand how most people would sit around a two. I was... Uh... I think I gave it a three out of five. Okay, that's, that's so, like, pretty, yeah, that's pretty fair. Yeah, so it wasn't horrible. It was entertaining enough, like especially for a free watch on Tubi. Right. And uh, sorry, go ahead. And I was gonna say, and I thought the acting was pretty good, and there was a couple characters that I felt for. Right. I I really felt like the main Rebecca Chiefkoff, uh, Cheskoff, Kreskoff was great. I think she yeah. delivered a performance of a true grieving mother which I thought was fucking excellent. Tim Davis gave it three stars. His reviews actually very well done. For some reason, this film was intriguing for me, even though nothing happened until the 50 minute mark. I don't know if I agree with that, but I can see what his point is when it comes to horror. The yeah. film is not without its flaws with all, with almost most of the characters being unlikable. Mm, I'm not sure if I agree with that either, but that's okay. But overall, I enjoyed it more than I didn't. He gave it 6.5. Though one of my favorite reviews down here is... Uh, <laughs> Something about Tubi. Back on my Tubi bullshit, and this is most definitely some bullshit. Um, <laughs> memories are the enemy. Agreed. Now wipe that memory of this film from my mind. Some of these comments are really quite funny. Wow. <laughs> um, I do enjoy reading reviews on, on Letterboxd. I find them quite interesting. Yeah, and I will say, uh, I do agree with Tim that the I really didn't care for any of the characters themselves. Like, all of them mm. was just like, how are you people friends? Like, I didn't buy because, like, they were all just, like, kind of dicks and assholes to each other. And the only one that I really liked was the uh, the married couple that owned the house, the black gentleman. Yes. I really just loved him. And I, like, because he was just, like, trying to do everything he could to please his wife. I mean, he had no backbone, but I still, I was just like, oh, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah, see, I, I thought that was all realistic adult relationships. For you got to remember, they all experienced the trauma of a child's death. And Scott yeah. and I aren't giving anything away. That happens in the first 30 seconds of the film. So this is, you know, this is what this film is based on. So to me, this was a reflection of what could happen if no one's dealt with what happened. Right. Right. So, but like, again, I think it all depends on the, where you're coming from with this film. Dave Bailey also gave it two stars. So if you enjoy, I would say, a lot of character development, a lot of, you know, seeing people at their absolute worst and a little bit of VR horrors, you know, sprinkled in, then this might be for you. It is for free on Tubi, both in Canada yeah. and the United States. So, you know, if you're a podcaster looking to build your 2024 list, I, I don't think it will hurt to watch this. Some people may be like me and really enjoy it and also be gaslit. It's also available <laughs> on Google Play, YouTube and Amazon for rent, but I don't know why you would rent it when it's on tubi for free <laughs> exactly like it, it's totally worth watching on tubi and from what i understand from something that tim said um like people that give it give their work to tubi, tubi or tubi takes on their movies they make money off of the ads like yes. they make money off of how many people watch it so and my understanding is decent money too so hey yeah, this is an why, indie actress and indie director so hence why i always go to tubi for a lot of stuff because i i love that fucking app yeah it is useful and i think there's well there's there's very often that there's it's on tubi and then also being charged somewhere else and personally like when it's something like this i think a tubi free watch is is decent if it's you know if what scott and i talked about is something that you want to check out and see yep give it a watch it may come up later for me this year in an award um but that's for me and that's how i connected with the main character right so. and plus there's still a lot of the year left so who knows yeah scott's like or maybe you'll get better taste by the end of <laughs> No, we already know that's not going to happen. Yeah, let's not set expectations that can't be met. So the next movie we're going to talk about is Somewhere Quiet. I know this is 2023, but again, Rob, suck my dick. Um, 
we go with worldwide releases, not fucking it played at two film festivals in 2023. So, yeah, right. this is the one I have not I have not had a chance to watch. You haven't. OK, nope. so escape has its limits. Meg is trying to readjust to normalcy after surviving a traumatic kidnapping. But her grounded sense of reality soon starts to deteriorate when she travels with her husband to his wealthy family's isolated compound. Not that isolated, but that's fine. Uh, this one was watched by Mr. Matt Wood. It is a 98-minute runtime. Um, his review goes as this. this. Yeah, this was a good one. Really well acted all around. Great story with some great cinematography and score. I like how with the story you're not sure whether the issues are happening or not. I'm paraphrasing just to not give spoilers. Um, however, there's something about this film which just doesn't elevate it for me, but I'm not sure why. Well worth a watch, though. <laughs> okay, I won't I won't give this the the score he gave, but he gave it seven out of ten. I won't say what he compared it to. We all know Matt has a very good sense of humor, and if I yeah. do, it will be a spoiler. But um, I I I have to agree with him. This is a slow burn. You know, we always talk about slow burns and what those are, and and just so we're clear, slow burns are something that have a lot of plot development usually a lot of character flushing out sometimes there's flashbacks i found this movie confusing and not in a good way like in a way that i felt like i was very unsure about the narrative narrator how reliable the narrator was which made it a challenge for me to get the ending um and maybe that's the point of this film is that you're supposed to walk away being like i don't know what happened and and that's fine maybe that's the purpose so this is available for rent on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, YouTube, and Microsoft Store. Uh, if you enjoy small, slow burns and you enjoy unreliable narrator, narr narrator and not knowing what's fake or real and dream shit, then you'll like this movie. If you find that stuff painfully boring, I suggest not renting it because you're probably not going to enjoy it. And it is called Somewhere Quiet. All right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's, I remember you said it was a slow burn, but you're like, intrigued. You saw, I, was, I do want to watch that one. I think you would appreciate it, Scott. But I think for people, if, if, because I know your taste and I know you would at least be like, all right, this is an interesting relationship type situation. But the narrator, the narrator in the narration is very unreliable. So that for some people, maybe, yeah, that could lose their interest. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. No, nope, I totally get that. Um, but yeah, the next one, I don't think you've watched this one. Uh, so the next one is uh, Gods of the Deep. Uh, it's an 80-minute runtime. Uh, the tagline, A New Depth of Fear. When a daring mission leads a deep-sea submarine team into a mysterious opening on the ocean floor, they uncover a lost underwater, underwater world and awaken its ancient race of otherworldly beings. Uh, so this was uh, another one that I found on Tubi, and... I had fun with this one. It's a low budget done right in my eyes. Um, very Lovecraftian horror. I mean, it's like basically Cthulhu is awakened in the ocean is almost what it's like. Um, but it reminded me a lot of uh, the movie that Erica introduced me to last year, Leviathan, that was from the 80s about a sea submarine with like a creature that's taking over and all the stuff with uh, corrupt people running the whole scenario up top. And yeah, the acting's a bit hokey and cheesy it's not like amazing and it's not bad and the special effects you know low budget so they did what they could with them and it used a lot of the shadowing to hide a lot of the stuff but i just found this one to be entertaining um i think i gave it like a three and a half out of five and it's um free on tubi so if you're a fan of like underwater claustrophobic horror or lovecraftian horror i say give this one a watch i think it's quite entertaining it goes by quickly with an 80 minute runtime i mean you can't really go wrong with that because horror films don't have that as much nowadays but yeah. no no but we did have some this run around that did yeah surprisingly they were a lot of uk films yeah oh, good 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 <laughs> do you think i would like this because you know i'm not a huge um, I Lovecraft think, person i think you would uh, at least enjoy it because it's more about like the human element element more than the lovecraftian part okay so yeah i think it would be worth a watch good to know i probably should have watched that instead of this piece of shit anyway. <laughs> i was just gonna say <laughs> 
So basically, you recommend Gods of the Deep to be? Yeah, I'll say it's a free watch. Definitely check it out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, this is something that Shutter decided they should pick up. (laughs) I don't know why. Says 2022 on here. I can't possibly imagine why it didn't get a wide release until now. Oh, I know. It's not good. (laughs) So it it is a torturous 80 minute runtime. Aware of a parasitic mask with a black magic shed blood on a halloween 16 years later a killer with the same profile slaughters angel's friend who then must fight fear overcome personal struggles and unmask the murder before someone else dies i respect that this is a low budget film i respect that they put a lot of love into this film and you know what that's totally cool and if that's your thing that is awesome I did not find this a well done um, low budget film. It's a slasher. So if you are a slasher completist and you enjoy all slashers, you may have a different opinion of this than, than I do. No one else besides me has watched it. So I don't have any other podcasters to jump off of. Like if Dave Bailey watched this, for example, and gave it a really high review, I would definitely take that as high consideration. Maybe it just worked better. So maybe if Dave does watch it, he can give some thoughts on it because it is on the shuddy. Um, but I really felt like it overstayed its welcome. This should have been a short. Um, you know, I can I can credit what they were trying to do. I just found it so low budget that it was hard to stay with. As opposed to another low budget one that we watched that was probably made with the same amount. But I honestly enjoyed a lot more, um, you know. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah, this, that's my thought. This sounds like a skip for me then. Yeah, I probably wouldn't run out and look at doing it anytime soon, right? But if anyone's interested, it is available on Shutter, and it is available for purchase on all the usual suspects. Apple TV, Google Play, Microsoft Store, YouTube. If you're supporting the person that made this film, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of really interested if Dave Bailey or Jason Gray watch it. And just to yeah. repeat it again, it's Bad Girl Boogie. It is on Shutter. I will get back to writing the movies that we cover. Last time we didn't really talk about that many. This time we've talked a lot a lot. So when Scott yes. posts the uh, the episode, I will go in and record which ones. And usually I just do one streaming service where you can find it on. So. Yeah, that's this one here. All right. Well, I'm still on my Tubi phase, so I will jump on to the next Tubi movie I watched. Uh, This one is called A Cold Grave. Uh, It's got a 75-minute runtime. A girl vanishes, prompting her brother to brave a dark forest where he unveils the secrets that lurk beneath, and a chilling mystery awaits. Oh, boy. So let me let me just explain this in a better synopsis and see if you can guess what movie this is ripping off. So two guys and a girl go into the woods looking for something supernatural. Get lost. What does that sound like? Blair Witch? It sounds like every found footage film that's come out after Blair Witch Project. Like, I kept thinking, I'm like, you guys are just redoing Blair Witch. Like, like the woods even, like, starts, like, doing stuff to where you can't find your way out. You get lost deeper oh, and deeper in. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, dear. And you wake up hearing people talking out in the woods and, like, shit like that. Except in this one, you have an older brother that is looking for his sister. Like, that went disappeared, disappeared with the two guys. Oh, for goodness sakes. Oh, the acting is painful because, um, unfortunately, the movie is supposed to be carried by the one brother and it just no he does not do a good job and another fault of this movie was you know i'm a big found footage fan now and one of the biggest gripes i've always had is you have to make your found footage found footage and make sense yes so please tell me how one guy with one camera like using it like this (laughs) filming Filming by yeah, hand. Yeah, like a handheld camcorder. Yeah. Okay. All of a sudden, wakes up in the middle of the night hearing screaming like someone's out in the woods. So he gets up, but leaves the camera in the tent. And then next thing you know, there's like a, a view of him walking towards the woods. But if it's found footage, shouldn't he have the camera in hand and you see it in a first person's perspective and not see his perspective? No, Scott. No, they had to leave the camera behind, and now the camera has to show him walking into the woods because they didn't have the budget for a second camera. <laughs> right? It's like, did couldn't you guys, like, so what? The, the, the camera grew legs, walked out of the tent, set itself up on a tripod, and recorded for you? Because that, that's not how this does. You, clearly, you know. Scott, that is exactly what happened in this situation. Ugh. 
Yeah, so, and you already know my thoughts on Blair Witch, not a fan, so this was just bleh, two out of five for me. Ooh, I think I will skip. Yeah, I think it was I will skip. Bad acting, found footage made no sense, and basically trying to rip off Blair Witch. Yeah. So you really don't re- recommend it to anyone, do you? No, no, unless you are like a hardcore found footage fan, then go ahead, but... <laughs> <laughs> Nah, nah, not that good, no. I mean, no recommend. <laughs> well, that's great because we're going to continue that trend. So, <laughs> the next movie is a fucking Shutter original. I don't, I don't know how they got Terrence Howard and Cuba Gooding Jr. to star in this fu- and Valerie Ortiz to star in this fucking movie. I don't know how much money they threw at them. I don't know because this movie sucked. <laughs> it's called Skeletons in the Closet. Sounds like what happens to most of my dates that don't work out. <laughs> haunted by a malevolent spirit since childhood. Oh man, been haunted since childhood, Scott. Shit's been that going has not on. Been a theme for years or anything. It's so original. A desperate mother allows herself to become possessed in order to save her terminally ill daughter. Oh, shudder. Um, this movie is predictable. If you've seen another movie like this, any other movie that's like this, like I think of the movie The Closet that came out a couple of years ago, um, where the dad has to save his daughter in a similar type of situation. Oh, much yes. better movie. I think of Come Play. Much better similar, movie. <laughs> much better movie. Um, so watch those because they're much better than this. I... I don't quite know why Shutter picked this up. It's a 98 minute runtime. No one of our podcasting people have watched it, but the people that have, Tim Walker gave it one star. Yeah. Um, someone named Vic Grimes gave it two and a half. It's it's not good. It's not good. Unless you are watching all the shutters like Scott and I, because you're a serious podcaster who's very professional um, and, you know, does everything right. Um, Correction. You are very professional. (laughs) I haven't watched these last two on Shudder. (laughs) But you know, though, (laughs) your life is better for it. Exactly. So, so, uh, it's it's a skip, but if you are watching all of them, it is available on Shudder. And if you don't have Shudder, don't you fucking bother renting it. You're not going to miss anything. And it is called Skeletons in the Closet, also known as Scott and I's Dating Life. Also known as this movie should have stayed in the closet. (laughs) It should have been been locked in the attic. It shouldn't even been. And then we should have made a sequel to stay the fuck out of the attic, which was just this movie (laughs) being up there. And the whole sequel of stay the fuck out of the attic is making sure nobody watches it. That would have been a better film. Just so we're clear, that would have been better. Heck, this is one that I'm not even going to be bothering with because no. I have not heard a single good thing from anybody. No, and like it's not going to matter. It's not going to be our top Shutter watch of the year, so it's okay. Right. <laughs> Hold on. Shutter's got to make it up to us. They're obviously just <sighs> doing some kindnesses right now. Eventually it will come to. Let's wait on that right now because there, there's still another Shutter on this list that I got to talk about that it did to Wolf with you. Oh, there is? Yep. Yep. We'll get to it. Oh. It must be a shutter in the U.S. because I don't I don't have it here. Okay. So, yeah. We we we. we okay. Will okay. I'm excited. <laughs> um, but the next one is uh one that I found on my good friend's Plex. Um, does not look like it is available anywhere to watch yet, but it's uh All Hallows Eve Trickster. So I don't know if this is like a low budget sequel to the All Hallows Eve one and two that Damien Leone did, but uh this is also an anthology. Uh. Tagline, this Halloween, hell opens. When a lost traveler on Halloween night comes across an isolated rural gas station, she thinks she's found her way home. Unbeknownst to her, the eerie gas station is the residence of a family of degenerate, devilish creatures. That's basically just the synopsis for the wraparound, which I couldn't tell you what the fuck happened in the wraparound. because <laughs> It was shot so, like, so dark that I couldn't see yeah. a fucking thing on my phone. Like it just looked, it just looked like a black screen with the occasional gray flash that happened on my screen. Oh man, that's so, not good. Yeah, so the wraparound, like, I can't tell you what the fuck happened there, but I will say the stories that made up this anthology minus that wraparound for low budget, actually pretty good. Like there were okay. some impressive special effects here and there used, and uh, like cheesy, like, but at the same time they were all short, 
quick to the point, and I don't think there was a single story besides that wraparound that I had, like, an issue with. I thought they were all, like, at least passably entertaining. Like, this was okay. a decent, decent little low-budget uh, indie anthology. Like, there isn't really much to say because I don't want to get into what the stories yeah. are, but like, yeah, acting-wise, you know, you can expect what you can expect from anthologies. It's a very mixed bag. And yeah, of course. And stories are all very mixed bag. Some will hit you more effectively than others, but I found all of them besides what I couldn't see <laughs> from that wraparound to be pretty entertaining. Like, when this comes out, I'd say it's worth at least a two ninety nine rental. Do you think it's weird that we're seeing it now because this is a Halloween film? Yeah. Uh, and, it's, and it's February. <laughs> but perhaps it will come out in the summer, maybe? Yeah, it might. Like, it'll probably, it'll probably just quietly drop on Tubi. You like, don't think it'll be a shutter pickup? I don't think so, because it seems like all these all Hallow's Eve anthology type independent films tend to go to Tubi. Okay, I will buy that, but I don't know. Shutter's been picking up some pretty low budget stuff, so True. we'll see what happens come Halloween time. But I will check it out. I uh, always love me a good anthology, and even the shitty. I feel like with anthologies, I have a lot more patience with them, usually because you know each story is quick. Exactly. And you're hopeful for the next one, right? Yeah. It's like speed dating. You're just hopeful for the next one, right? Yep. Yeah, I was just saying that's why I like anthologies and found footage because they're usually quick and to the point. Which is exactly Scott and I, too. Damn right. <laughs> right? So and, uh, this is a screener, though, right? Yes. Okay. So unless you're privileged, serious podcasters like Scott and I, you don't have access to this, but you heard it first here on Friday Nightmares. So. Uh, and this next one, though, I'm curious about that you watched. Yeah, you haven't seen this yet, right? Nope, this was one I was going to look into. This is going to be dropping on the Netflix for anyone who's interested. Um, I S S the war on earth will be decided in space. This is sitting at a 96 minute runtime tensions flare in the near future aboard the international space station. As a conflict breaks out on earth, U S and Russian astronauts receive orders from the ground to take control of the station by any means necessary. Are you missing some good old Cold War Cold War conflict between the United States and Russia? Hell like, yeah. No ISS is here. So this is not a bad film. I did see it at the movie theaters. Um, really? It's a space. Yeah, yeah. George and I went to the movie theater. He's a big sci-fi guy. And I like sci-fi if it sprinkles in a little bit of horror. So I was I like, had, let's go see this. I had no idea this was even in theaters. It was in theaters. So... Huh. Up here anyway. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't near you. Um, so it's it's it was worth it for the space shots, right? Like the space shots are incredible. And they did an, a great job of recreating the ISS because the ISS is a real thing. It's a real space right. station, right? Uh, where research is done. But I, I think the story takes the concept and, and super sizes it. Obviously, the people on the ISS are scientists. Um who are doing research and how this movie made them seem is probably a little more conniving than necessary. I think if this was to really happen, um, what the events that occurred would probably not occur, but it's a good little storytelling. Uh, no one has seen it besides me out of our podcasting brothers and sisters. So uh, the one review I have here is is three stars. Uh, and I should say the rating is 2.5. I think that's fair. I would give it three stars out of five. It's light on the horror, unless you kind of see people turning on each other as a horror plot device, which I which I can. Yeah. Um, I put it in here because, you know, some people would float in between or mm. what happens here. Like the Earth is, in essence, being destroyed when they're up in the in space. So that could be pretty stressful, too. Just a little bit. <laughs> right? I, I do think this is worth a rental. I think it's a beautiful movie. I think it's well made. I, eventually, it's going to drop on Netflix. So if you you hold your breath and wait, Netflix will pick it up at some point this year. Um, or we'll release it this some point this year. And if not, it's available on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play. In Canada, it's available on Cineplex for rent. And I would say if, you know, you like space movies and you kind of like the idea of being in a confined place and people turning on each other, kind of like the thing, only no aliens, it's worth it. There are no aliens in this film. No. Do not go into this film thinking you're going to see aliens. There are no but aliens. There's... But there's gremlins, right? No, there's no gremlins either. Uh, but really, fail. 
F. Who are we to fear, Scott? The aliens or us? Aliens. Oh, no, it's us. We're all assholes. No, no, especially aliens. the Americans. I would honestly say the Americans are definitely the assholes in this. Oh, I'm oh, just like, there, there's a movie I'll be talking about that kind of covers that very blatantly. I'm just kidding. It actually really wasn't. It kind of went both ways, so. But um, trust me, there's a movie that talks this. You, oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, I'm excited for that. <laughs> so that's, that's ISS. So let's hear what you got, because I have not seen this next one. All right, so this is one. Uh, this one is called lovely dark and deep or as i'm gonna call it lovely dark and derp <laughs> um the runtime is 87 minutes uh the tagline she owes this land a body lennon a new backcountry ranger travels alone through the dangerous wilderness hoping to uncover the origins of a tragedy that has haunted her since she was a child so you know Haunted her since she was a child. You know, more trauma that you seem to be coming up with in 2024. But um, this one stars the, uh, what's her name? Georgina Campbell, who was actually the main girl in Barbarian. So I was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> and uh, Erica and I decided to watch this last night. We watched the trailer and we're like, oh, okay. This looks really freaking good. Like, it's creepy looking. It's like beautiful location because it was shot in Portugal out in the mountains and just... But yeah, just very creepy, isolated horror is what we got with like some su supernatural elements. Unfortunately, besides the beautifully shot film and good acting and just the beautiful locations, the story was confusing as fuck and I have no idea what the hell happened. And this is one of those movies where I only looked at my phone for about 0.2 seconds the entire film. And in that 0.2 seconds, I look back up and going, what the fuck's going on? I rewind it, trying to think, okay, maybe I missed something. Nope, still, you, I have no idea what the fuck's going on. So, <laughs> And you and Erica weren't making out? Nope, we were actually, pay, like, she lost interest and was, like, playing on her phone, but I was, like, invested, like, all right. Let's, look, You're like, I'm, no, I'm a serious podcaster. <laughs> but no, this one was, I don't know what happened. Like, this had such great potential, but it was just, like, so, so fucking confusing. And um, the few people that I've, I'm friends with on Letterboxd that have seen it, uh, two, three, two, three out of five star ratings, one from uh, Christopher G. Moore, uh, and then a guy called Movies Review, they both gave it three out of five, mm -hmm. um, and our good friend Donna Nelly gave it a two out of five. Uh... And yeah, this had such potential, and I'm so bummed out, because this looked like it was, I was like, ooh, this could be my number one of the year so far, and it, you know, it, it shit the bed. Oh, uh, but this she, one. Hmm? Did Georgina sound British in this one? No, no. I think it was supposed to be an American film. Okay. Like in Portugal. <laughs> okay. Nice. But um, yeah, this can be rented on Apple TV, Vudu, Google Play, Amazon, and what is that? Uh, I don't know what that other one is because it doesn't show up. Okay. So yeah, just those locations is where it can be rented. Eh, I'd say dollar ninety nine rental maybe. Like I gave it a three out of five. It was. And that was just mainly because it was well acted and well shot, but the story just fumbled big time. Well, I'm glad you told me because now I won't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Falling down that road and back again. You watch shitty movies and I have to. <laughs> and we tell each other not to watch other ones. You're a friend in a confidant. We so talk where... to each other about these bad movies. <laughs> So if anyone wants to watch it, is it available anywhere or no? Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, it was uh, available to rent on oh, Apple, sorry. Vudu, Google Play, Amazon. Okay. Your usual suspects. Usual suspects. So we'll continue talking about Georgina Campbell because she's also in another movie that I watched called Tim. Really? So this is T period M T T one M, but Tim is how it's said. Oh, my um, sexy man boy, Tim Davis. Mm. Right? Um, Edmund Ferron is in this, and he played the ghost in Winchester. So for anyone that's seen Winchester, and like the part where you realize that the, one of the characters is dead and is a ghost, that's him. Hmm. So I will say he was, he was cast perfectly for this role. He was the standout performance. If anyone should watch this movie, it's for his performance in this role. He does an excellent job of playing a robot. Like, really creepy, really well done, great actor. This is a British film. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much based just outside of London, which oh I've been boy. to. <laughs> Here we go. 
folks. Um, and her husband in this is Irish from Ireland. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but I'll, enough about me. Let me read the synopsis. Tim, his intelligence is artificial. The threat is real. Mm-hmm. Prosthetic scientist Abby and her adulterous husband, Paul, which is kind of misleading because he doesn't cheat on her. I guess he did at one time, but not in this oh. film. Adjust to life outside the city as Abby begins working for a high-tech company, Intergate, developing a humanoid AI, Tim. So this is more about AI is going to ruin us if we let AI take over. We're all scared of the AI. Well, that's, so if, going to be a, that's going to be a theme going forward with a lot of horror films, guaranteed. Between COVID and AI, man, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And pregnant that, horror. Pregnant and horror, preg- pregnancy that. horror, because everyone got knocked up over COVID. There was nothing else to do but stay home and bang. So, you know, if you like AI st- horror, like Margot came out a couple of years ago about the AI house. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if you like Megan from last year, you'll enjoy this film. It's It's easy to watch. It's a shame because I was really digging it. I also watched it with George. It's a 101 minute run time, 101 minute run time, and we were both into it until the third act. I I don't know what happened in the third act, hmm. but it really took a shift to something that was fucking weird and didn't really make a lot of sense. It's almost like they rushed writing the final act. In my opinion, it just like, I I don't know what happened, but I felt like they did a rush job. So for the people we know, Sandra Kane or Dave Bailey has given it two and a half stars. Uh, Tim Walker's given it three and Kate Pollock's given it three. I probably sit at three and a half. I did enjoy it probably a little bit more than um, our fellow folks here did. But I, at the same time, that third act just really sent it down a weird path. And it did not need to be 101 minutes. It's a good 10 minutes, 15 minutes could have been shaved off this movie. Right. Um, I would still say watch it. And I would say this is something you could watch with Erica. And I'd be interested in Erica's thoughts of the ending. Well, I was going to say, to you, is this logical? Does this make logical sense? Because if not, she's going to have an aneurysm. Um, <laughs> well, like, it's AI. So, yeah. Does it, like, you know what I mean? Like, th- tell warn her that if she decides to watch it, it's about an AI butler go evil, right? So, like, you have to suspend disbelief. You do, right? right? Like, or not, is the... not to criticize Erica, but not no. for all horror movies make sense. But <laughs> I, I think that it moves quick enough. And I think that I would be curious to hear what both of you think of the third act, because I think that's where it really goes off the rails. Okay. But uh, just to kind of jump on something you said just a few seconds ago for, you know, so to put it in the slang of new age kids, uh, Android Butler go brr. <laughs> I don't get that. I don't, care what I don't know doing. why I've been seeing a lot of people just saying like, something, Android something Butler going, going, go Oh burr. yeah, probably it's how they die, right? Like, they're like, <laughs> they're, like the coding goes right? off, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is, you know, I don't know. More look forward to more AI gone wrong. If you're interested in renting this, it's available on Apple TV, Google, Voodoo, YouTube, Cineplex. Again, if you like AI horror, this will be for you. If you don't like AI horror, probably skip it. Um, but I will definitely say that Iman Farinan may win an award for me this year because he was fucking excellent. Excellent casting. Whoever got him in this role, fucking perfect. He was great. Really, nice. really. I hope to see more from him because I actually really liked him in this. So Yeah, this is one that I definitely planned on watching. Yeah, check it out. And as I said, America will probably get mad, but she gets mad at a lot of movies. So like, you know, she does, not, it's so not, as, not as mad as what was that one I made her watch? Quicksand. <laughs> not as bad as quicksand. <laughs> oh, that one she was just like, I'm disappointed in Heather. <laughs> I aim to disappoint, so she should look forward <laughs> to a lifetime of that. So, oh, but all right. So this one, we finally got into a movie that we've both seen. Yay! <laughs> uh, this one is uh, Double Blind, uh, with a 90-minute runtime. Tagline is: If you fall asleep, you die. After an experimental drug trial goes awry, the test subjects face a terrifying side effect. If you fall asleep, you die. Trapped in an isolated facility, panic ensues as they try to escape and somehow stay awake. Uh, first off, before I even get into my thoughts on this movie, is um, the poster artist for the movie Swallow <laughs> from 2020 would really like to have a word with the poster artist for Double Blind. 
Because mm-hmm. holy shit, is this poster a fucking almost one to one identical ripoff of Swallow from 2020? Like Very all true. the way down to the woman wearing a blue shirt and holding up a pill. But instead of holding up a pill in Swallow, it's holding up a tech. But it, in the background is red. Everything is the exact same. Because like I even showed you the poster mm-hmm. comparison. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty similar. Yeah, it's like a bit ridiculous there. But um, besides that, though, you were the one that told me to check this movie out. And goddamn, yeah, this movie mm-hmm. was really freaking good. Um. The acting in it, I thought, was really well done. Um, definitely has to, a lot to do with, like, science horror. So, like, this kind of fits in the science fiction horror in a way because of drug testing and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, you know, isolation horror. People just kind of turning on each other and just being all sleep-deprived. Like, I could see shit like this happening. Oh, 100%. And I was just looking at the reviews. Sorry. I love this film. Uh, This is also a UK film. It's made by the Irish Film Board, which, I don't know, I haven't seen a bad Irish Film Board movie yet, to be honest with you. Any time that I see... Yeah, like, I think they're pretty good. I don't think they cut out a lot of stuff that makes it overseas here, but when they do, they tend to be fucking decent. And at 90 minutes, this was a perfect timing. We're talking a perfect amount of plot development, perfect amount of character development, really good use of special effects, really good play on what's happening to them. Um, Matt Wood gave it four stars. You gave it four stars. This is a five star for me. This will be on my top 10. Like I, I already know this will be in my top 10 this year. This was just so like dark. And yes, the ending's a little silly. Okay. The ending's a little silly. Right. But you got to kind of just be like, let's pretend that this is, but what happens to people and the disturbing behavior that occurs and the acting from all of these young people, like, can we just stop and be like, Holy fuck, were their performances believable? Oh, like absolutely. I felt like I was watching people in an institution go through this. And I agree with you, Scott. This is absolutely something that could happen. This is a must watch for this year. Um, it's worth whatever money you pay for this movie. It is very good. Yeah, like I was very impressed by this. Um, and uh, even the doctor, let's not forget about her. Oh, she yeah. was fantastic too. And I've seen her in a, like what I instantly recognized her from was uh, Tales of Halloween. She played like the witch neighbor in one of the short stories in that. Yes, and it, yeah, she yes. was great in this. She was also in Bats and Death Sember um as well and land of the lost and there was like a bunch of people from game of thrones in this uh like side characters i think or something like that like there was a bunch of people that like side people that were in game of thrones so definitely people with acting chops they got in this film watch it you know i don't want to give anything away i won't even read matt wood's review because um, he has spoiler, spoilers in it, but to me, this was a really, really fucking well done film. Slow clap, Irish Film Board. Thank you for releasing something that's fucking good. Um, that was an enjoyable film to watch. And I got to say, the poster art, I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be fucking stupid. And right. then I watched it and I was like, shit, this is great. So definitely spread the word. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, and it's on all the streaming services and it's called Double Blind. Yeah, but I was going to say, Lynn, on my list of people that are reviewed it, um, it's all threes, three and a halfs, and fours from everybody that's reviewed it and watched it. So, yeah, definitely a major consensus of pretty damn good movie. Agreed, 100%. Have you have you seen the next one or no? Not yet, because uh, it was subtitled, and I just have not had a chance to watch it. So, this is Trunk Locked In. This is also a 96-minute runtime. It is available on the Amazon 26-year-old medicine student Melina wakes up disoriented in a locked trunk and realizes, to her horror, she is missing more than just her memory of what happened. With her phone as the only link to the outside world, the intelligent young woman wages a desperate fight for survival while the vehicle races relentlessly towards a terrible secret. This is a very interesting film. It's, It's isolation horror mixed with a whole bunch of other backstories and stuff going on. It's interesting... Um, you know, if we take and we look at Amazon, it's a not a bad drop on Amazon. I do not think this is going to grace anybody's top 10 list this year. But do I think it was isolation horror done well? Yes, I do. I think they utilized the concept of being locked in a trunk. I don't know why the guy never took her phone. But anyway, yeah, that's, you know, that seems weird. Right. But um, overall, I think it's entertaining. And if you have Amazon, it's worth a watch. If you like isolation horror, 
Um, out of our friends, we have Matt Wood gave it a three star. Tim Davis gave it a three star as well. And Tim Walker, I believe, gave it a four star. Let's see Tim's review. A claustrophobic thriller set mostly in one location, a trunk of a car. The film held my attention. Sonography was its cinemagraph. Cinematography. Oh Thank you. Fuck my life. Was decent. Acting is good and the story is compelling, but not a film I would want to rewatch. That's fair. It's, it definitely is a is a one uh, time watch. <clears throat> so Matt thinks it's just okay because he's not a fan of single location films, but this had enough to keep me entertained, though it lacked any tension. It did? Matt must have been watching a different film because I don't have lots of tension in it. So anyway, if you like isolation films, this is for you. And and if you have Amazon, you know, you can watch it. It's included with Amazon. So check it out. Yeah, because this is one that I uh, heard Tim talking, Tim Davis talking about. So I wanted to at least watch it at some point because I knew it was an Amazon Prime one. And, you know, we do our Prime awards and stuff, too. Right. So like, I'll check it out. We're serious podcasters here on the Friday Night Wars podcast, and we have to, you know, watch everything because we're that committed. Damn straight. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, this next film, this is the Shutter movie I was talking about and the America Bad type movie I was talking about. Okay, so this movie is called History of Evil. It's got a 97 minute runtime. Synopsis is a family on the run from a corrupt state takes refuge in a safe house with an evil past a terrifying last stop on a near future underground railroad so yeah this is what if uh the way i took this was what if trump's america became a thing and all the mega cult people were basically running the country and uh anyone that protested or was an activist was considered a threat to the country and a terrorist and thrown in prison and basically yeah this is like a futuristic america and uh this woman gets out of prison escapes and it gets with her husband and daughter and they land in this safe house and it's <sighs> It is so fucking on the nose of like, oh, mega cult is the KKK and all the conservatives are bad, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just so. Well, you thought, you thought isn't that first... kind of accurate, though? The mega cult does well, have I, some problems. Well, <laughs> it is, but uh, the, the way it's done in this movie, though, is just kind of mm. like, yes, we know this. That's the, okay. that's the problem. <laughs> but, um, and it's just the characters you. Don't it? Uh, I can't stand these two characters. I hated them both because they were just awful and should not be together. And like, it just was a dumb story that was confusing and went nowhere, just like the other one that I watched that just was confusing and didn't make any sense. Like, at the end of this one, I'm going, wait, what just happened? That was it? Why? What? So, this was another, this one I gave two out of five. Like, this one was just, like, and it's got a good budget, good acting, like, it's got some recognizable faces, but once again, another one that just shat the bed. And this is just another Shutter exclusive that's just, no. So I'm watching the trailer right now. Um, I don't know why I didn't see it on Shutter for me. Maybe um, it's just an American release. But does the house have a history of other things, perhaps? Um, hooded figures? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, like, I'll be real. Um, your your country's in a lot of shit right now, right? Like, oh, there yeah. is, there is, there's times where I wonder if the Handmaid's Tale is going to happen in the United yeah. States, right? So, like, I mean, you, you get wrong. Right? I, I can appreciate the flavor, but it seems to me like it's trying to do a lot in this film. Like, it's trying to be a political film. Mm-hmm. And then it's tying in what it looks to be a haunted house. Yeah. Correct? Okay. So, hmm. And it just doesn't land with either of them. Okay. It almost feels like political film mixed with haunted house mixed with elements of The Shining. Okay. It's weird. I just, eh. And mm. yeah, apparently I'm not the only one because. Uh, yeah, let's hear what other people have to say. Yeah, let's see. Tim Walker gave it two stars. Mm. Um, okay, this guy I don't I don't recognize him. He's one of my friends though, but uh, he gave it one star. Don and Ellie gave it two stars. Uh, why is it the people that I don't recognize are not popping up on Letterbox when I click on their name? But yeah, they gave it two star. Yeah, it's two stars across the board with everybody that I'm following, but no one's written an actual review of their thoughts. Interesting. Okay. Do you think I should watch it? Just because of the political part, 
I'd be curious. Okay. Okay. This is yeah, and it's a Shutter is... film too. I should probably watch it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was gonna say this was on Shutter, and this is also on our friends Plex. Okay, so I can watch it on Plex then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting. That's a shame. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, because I wouldn't let them go. Because you know me, I'm all about the political. Like, yeah. Get, blah blah blah. But like this one just. Fell. Well, and it's and and again, it's not the average conservatives. We're talking about people that yeah. don't think that certain people should be allowed to marry and women shouldn't be allowed to have abortions, and pe- depending on the color of your skin, should depend how you should be treated, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> that, that's not conservatives. That's someone that's a, an extremist, right? But um, it sounds like from what you described, they tried to do it all instead of just being like, all right, here's this family that needs to leave this state and they're staying yeah. in this house and it's haunted. Yeah. And just the characters, you're just like, I hate these characters. They're terrible people. Uh, like, then you want them to die. <laughs> well, there's a line, you know, this woman is an activist that escaped from prison oh, and okay. she had a daughter like with the guy that they're with. Yeah. And first time she's seen her daughter in years because she was in prison and they get to the house and her, the mother goes, I just, since I can't be an activist anymore, like, I don't know what my purpose in life is anymore. And I'm sitting here going, <laughs> to be a fucking mother? As someone who just became a parent, Scott's like, I feel like I got the answer. <laughs> right? It's like, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory here. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I feel as though your your review of this is not far off. I don't think I'm going to like it that much more than you did. But I feel like I should at least watch it because, well, I've got to see what the twist is, Scott. Exactly. And plus, <coughs> it's poli- it's political, so it may hit, uh, your, hit your Heather Bones a little more than mine. But It seems a little heavy-handed. It was it, like the very... power last year, right? I was kind of like, even for me, I was like, this is a little heavy-handed. Like, I get the point. Yeah. But, you know, and that's fine. If you if you really want to create heavy handed political films like that, there's always going to be people that like that. Um, but it's, it's hard to do a, like, what was the one we watched where they were reacting the civil war, but we didn't know it was antebellum. Oh, uh, yeah. Antebellum. Antebellum. Right. Like to me, that was clever. That twist was clever. Yeah. Right. It gets to the end and you're like, Oh, okay. Like I still not like the best movie in the entire world, but at least I can be like, Oh, got it. Right. right? Like got it. So, but I feel like other times people take the political stuff and they just try to do too much. Yeah. They just try to put everything ever that they could put politically and then a ghost story and everything else. And it doesn't always fucking add up. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, to continue to be nauseating, the next movie we're going to talk about is also a British film. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> it came out in 2002 and it's called The Group. Uh, sorry, 2022, not 2002, 2022, but it just recently had a wide release. This is a definitely a low-budget film, but low-budget done right, in my opinion. It is a 71-minute runtime. A support group for addicts comes under siege from a mysterious gunman intended, intended on punishing them for past tragedies, all with something to hide, and the group must confront their shared past to discover the truth and stay alive. I really liked this film. I thought they used a very small setting well and effectively. I thought all the characters played, you know, none of these characters you're supposed to overly like. They're all recovering addicts that have done shitty things that they're talking about in the group. Right. But you do build empathy for them. And I think that's an important factor here. And the movie doesn't overstay its welcome. It gets to the point and it works within the realm uh, this is currently in my top 10. Nice. So it will probably be in my top 20 by the end of the year. That's how much I enjoyed it. Um, if not my top 10, we'll see what the rest of the year does. But I really thought this movie was well done. I really thought they used the setting well. And I really think that, um, yeah, it just all around well delivered, like well delivered fucking film, perfect runtime, simple set, great concept, and an abrupt ending that hammered in the fucking point. Nice. Not trying to be something is, you know how that last movie we talked about tried to be 18 billion things. Uh huh. This was pretty straight. So forward. There's a group of addicts. They've done something. Someone shows up for revenge. I like, like that. Give me something simple. Like, I think you and Erica, if you get a chance tonight, watch it. It's 71 minutes. Okay. Basically, it's a little longer than a show. I think you will enjoy. Now, it is character heavy and it is dialogue heavy. So you do have to be watching it or you'll miss parts of it. Right. You know what I mean? But overall, I think this is a really good film. It is available to rent. Um, If what I describe sounds like it would be right for you, it is available on Apple TV as well as Google Play and Spectrum On Demand. 
Nice. Yeah, this is one I definitely wanted to check out. Just didn't get around to it yet. I, I think you and Erica should watch it. I think it's a, and plus it's short. You know, it won't take a long time. Right. And I and I do like that. Oh, yeah. We know Erica's mentioned that you like to get in oh. and out short time. Oh, 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 hey, oh. as long as everyone gets to where they need to, Scott, no oh, one's oh, it oh, for oh, hours. Rubble, 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 rubble. I like the same thing. Don't be. <laughs> We're 40, Scott. No one wants to be banging for fucking hours on end. And if someone says that, they're fucking lying. Yeah. Shit gets sore <laughs> and people get tired. Don't give me this nonsense. Anyway. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It is there's, true. There's your sex talk from Heather, everybody. Yeah, really like, I'm so tired talk. of people that try to pretend like, oh, man, I made love for hours. No, you fucking didn't. You did it for 10 minutes. Don't even try this shit. <laughs> there may, like, that was penis vagina time or penis <laughs> butt time, whatever it was. You may have done shit leading up to it, but the actual contact was 10 minutes tops don't bullshit me if not you were all both sore afterwards or right. drunk and hot while you were doing it that's the only other and you don't know what time was <laughs> you didn't lose track of everything <laughs> yeah no shit right? it's true did you uh, watch this one yes this is yeah, uh we both about it yeah so i think i was the one that mentioned it to you yeah yes you did all right so this one is called kill her uh it's an 88 minute runtime uh maddie and her friends go on a weekend trip to the woods to plan maddie's wedding Settled near the camp of Mr. Rogers and with no phone signal, their trip starts to turn into a bad idea when they start dying and a secret is revealed. Uh, so this is basically a isolated slasher film. Um, and I, while it's cheesy and I kind of seen the ending coming, I had fun with this. Like, it's low budget. It's got some pretty decent special effects. Um, especially there's a kill that happens that's fucking brutal in like a hotel area. Um, but yeah, I thought this was, um, there's not much to say about this. It's a very simple movie, but, uh, yeah, like just fun, easy to watch slasher film. And I believe this is now available on Tubi. Yes, it is. It is available on Tubi. And honestly, I, I didn't predict this ending. Oh, really? I honestly, no, I didn't think that the twist was going to be what the twist was. And I really enjoyed it. I thought that this was fucking low-budget horror done right. I thought the young ladies in this did a phenomenal job, especially MC Ahuff, who plays Eddie. I thought she was fucking fabulous. Yeah. Um, I hated her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she may yeah. get an award this year, depending if I hate someone else more than her. Um, excellent fucking low-budget film. Low-budget done right. This is what we're talking about again. Low-budget done right. Um, and it was it was nice to see that put together in a film that was entertaining you know you're looking at an 88 minute runtime could have been a little shorter this probably could have been 70 minutes but hey um overall worth it and definitely you got tubi why not like it's free on tubi yeah. watch it if you really want to rent it it's on apple tv google play and youtube but i don't know why you would do that when it's for free on tubi and i definitely think it's a free worth your time watch i completely agree like i I went into this not expecting much because I didn't watch a trailer or anything, but I'm going, all right, let's just see. This could be one of those low-budget bad mm -hmm. movies. But no, this one ended up being a lot of fun. Like, I had fun with it. It was, I gave it a 7 out of 10 or a 3.5 out of 5. Like, it's you know, good movie. I would agree with you, Scott. I think that's a really fair score. Um, we're going to talk about something that really wasn't a good movie next. This <laughs> movie is called Night Explorers the Asylum. Ooh, yeah. Erica and I started this one oh. and made it about 10 minutes and turned it off. Thank God. Because it starts <laughs> off, you think it's going to be found footage. And then it kind of is found footage. Do you get to the part where they're sitting on the couch and nope. are on the bed pl party planning? I don't. Wait, maybe. I, that seems familiar. Yeah, like they're sitting there and they're like, oh, my God, I can't wait for the party. <laughs> right. And they're all getting together to get drunk and shit. And then they're going to go into this haunted asylum. Did you get to that scene? Uh, that's OK. Now I don't think I have. No. Oh, good. You shut it off. You knew it was shitty before you even got to that point. So <laughs> um, this is another British film that sadly would probably make people not want to go to the UK. So don't watch it. Um, <laughs> it sums up of when a group of urban explorers mm -hmm, go to a haunted house. Oh, <laughs> investigators going to a haunted house. 
I bet it's not going to be really haunted and we're going to make up some things. Oh my God, it is haunted. We're going to get fucked. After hearing your great description of Night of Evil, this and that could go together as like a as a double feature offering of ridiculousness of things not done well. Oh so I think at times they meant for this to be a found footage. But here's the thing with found footage films, my friends, who made this film. You need to be able to see what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. So if if you want to do it in the dark, there needs to be a light of some kind. Yeah, like some, night vision, maybe. Like a flashlight, anything, anything. And there was none of that. There were points where it was so hard for me to see what was going on that I couldn't even really see what was happening. And it seemed like they were just in a really cheap haunted house where people ran around and jumped out at them. But they were supposed to be evil stalkers or ghosts or I don't know what the fuck they were. This was just people who watched paranormal, um, or sorry, they watched Grave Encounters, and they thought to themselves, we'll make the really shitty version of Grave Encounters, and that's what this was. That's what this was. So, um, you know, I I don't understand. David Garrett gave it four stars. Good for you, David. I usually agree with your reviews, but um, I I don't get why you enjoyed this. I didn't think it was that great. But if you're a found footage completist and you want to watch it, it's a 96-minute runtime. It is available on Apple TV, Google, Vudu. Uh, you, Tubi, it's free. I don't know. If you really want to watch this, it's free, people, on Tubi. Watch it there. Do not rent it. it you don't need to rent it. <laughs> and you really need to be a found footage completist. Like, you really need to see someone that loves this paranormal investigators going oh. to a haunted place. <laughs> and now there's people there. Like, if that's your jam, baby, then check it out because you'll have a good time. Otherwise, you can skip this bad boy and on to something else bigger and better. Which actually is the next one that we're going to talk about. Yeah. I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed that one. Yeah, and unfortunately, Letterbox just took a shit out of me and is not working, so I had to jump over to IMDb, so I won't be able to give where it is available to rent or watch or anything. I got um, you. Okay, so the next one is called Horny Teenagers Must Die. In an hour and 24-minute runtime, a group of high school graduates travel to a cabin in the woods to celebrate and party, only to be picked off one by one by a demented psychopath who kills with farm tools and sex toys. <laughs> this is another low-budget slasher that, as soon as I see the title, I'm going, yeah, this is one I'm going to have to watch without Erica, because this, oh, yeah. this, this is not her type of yeah, movie. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. So I was watching it while I was uh, doing the dishes and stuff around the house. So, And, yep, this is that total, like, you know what? We love 80 slashers. We love Friday the 13th. We're going to reference a lot of this stuff. Um, so we're going to have copious amounts of nudity and low-budget practical effects gore with Fuck really yeah. dumb. They took the whole dumb teenagers that you want to see killed to a whole nother level. And oh, this, they sure did. Because for fuck's sakes, these guys are all terrible friends because there's this one nerdy kid. I'm just going to spoil one quick little scene here. But there's one nerdy kid that while these friends are drunk, they decide to go, hey, lean up against this tree with an apple on your head. <laughs> and they start shooting arrows at him to like hit the arrow on his head. And they shoot him in the thigh with an arrow. And they're going, oh, just walk it off, you baby. And shit like that. I'm going, these guys are absolute assholes. <laughs> Did you feel like this was like a tribute to the burning? Like that part was like, I, a, nod, uh, like a nod at the burning by some stance? Like they were I trying to kind of, like, yeah. Like right? I think it was just a nod to like all these 80s slashers. Yeah. It was, it was, I've never seen so much like sex with like not showing, but get showing a lot. That looked yeah. very realistic. Um, I did get a big kick out of the couple that's into like crazy like BDMS oh, getting, stuff. Getting pegged and stuff like that as <laughs> getting well. Getting pegged and ass. slapping each other in the fucking van because they like oh. it rough and stuff. Like it was so over the top and you know the the guy who's kind of like the good guy but not really a good guy. Like none of these characters were were likable. Nobody yeah, you wanted like, to see them all die, right? The girl that's banging the cop but has a wife. Like it was it was, but fuck, it was entertaining. And the guy that was the officer was the director. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. So I think that's really really entertaining to be honest with you. Uh, Connor Holden looked like the only dude that looked familiar to me. I feel like he played the main dude. I feel like I've seen him in something else. 
Uh, and Alicia McNeil, I think she was the one that made the Boogeyman movie, Bad Girl okay. Boogie. So obviously these are all kind of low budget people that know each other. But I, I, I liked this one out of all the low budget, like the true, like we're talking bottom of the bill or not a lot of money, low budget. And I thought the plot device for this was actually pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, I thought the reason why people were being killed was relatively interesting. Yeah, and, so Right? And I'll give them credit for having realistic sex scenes. Like, they were all sex scenes that I was... Except for, like, the over-the-top BDSM. Maybe that is... Uh, maybe that's accurate, too. But it was... It was pretty... It was pretty funny. I had a good chuckle throughout this, to be honest. Yeah, I was gonna say, same here. Like, I just... Like, you go into this one knowing it's going to be ridiculous, and you'll have a good time. Because it's yeah, like, basically... Nothing's being taken seriously. Definitely not, right? It's a silly fucking movie. Movie, and you kind of got to go in knowing that. So if like silly low budget films are not for you, this is don't watch this because you're probably going to be annoyed. But if you like the silly fucking, you know, hey, let's make a slasher low budget film, you'll have a good time with this. I do think at what was it? How long was it? 80 minutes? Yeah, 84 80, minutes, I think. Or something 84 like that. minutes. I think it overstayed its time a little bit. It is available. Uh, Letterbox cut out on me, too. But I did see that it was available on Vudu before it cut out. So it is available okay. to rent on Vudu. If if you like this kind of thing, low-budget slashers, uh, ridiculous teenagers, over-the-top stereotypes, you'll enjoy this film. Yep, completely right. agree. Oh, and it is to rent on uh, Amazon Prime for four ninety nine, from what IMDb says. Awesome, cool. So there's two places. And four ninety nine is decent if this is what you like. Again, yeah, exactly. Decent if this is what you like. Now, I think you saw this one, too. Yes, I did. Right? Um. So this one is called No Way Up. It's a, 20, it's a 2024 film as well. Brace yourself. Characters from different backgrounds are thrown together when the plane they're traveling on crashes into the Pacific Ocean. So when I first saw that there was an airplane at the bottom of the ocean and sharks, I'm like, what fucking bullshit film is this going to be, <laughs> right? Like, I was, I was here for it. And I got to say, it was actually pretty good. Yeah, like I was surprised. <laughs> This is the shock of the year. I'll be real. You would think by looking at the poster of all the films we watched that this would be the worst film. It wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst. And I would definitely put it up there for enjoyable. Um, a nightmare fight for survival ensures, ensures when the air supply is running out and danger creeping in from all sides. Who was the older man that was in this? Um, the was it Colum Brandon? Yeah, Colum Colum Meanry. Um, oh yeah, I recognize him from the last off. Yeah, he's like Irish or Scottish or something. He's been in a lot of shit. Um, it was really interesting seeing him in this film. I thought we were gonna get him for a lot longer than we did, but he was the most recognizable person. So I assume he cost a lot of money, <laughs> and they can only afford him for like a little bit of the film which is fine yeah. which is fine and um I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead i'll say you go oh, ahead because no. i had something um but i was gonna say uh yeah when i watched this uh i have to say like the plane crash itself was super effective and well done like it was kind of freaky like how realistic it looked oh and, dude i'm so glad i'm not flying like yeah. <laughs> for a couple months i would not want to watch this and get on a plane yeah like this was uh an intense plane crash like for something that seems to be a bit of a low budget film and i have to say there was a moment in this that may win it depending on how the rest of the year goes but may win the award of uh hit me in the feels yeah there was some parts in here that actually kind of got to me yeah like the characters are all very much stereotypical in yeah. a sense like you have you know certain tropes but you wanted them all to make it yeah, like exactly you, you did want for, except for the uh asshole friend oh really i didn't like him just because okay. of like, how he seemed like he was like very uh bigoted yeah bigoted and anti uh homosexual or again yeah, like yeah. against homosexuality yeah. so he came around towards the end yes. um but yes i agree i i agree that's a very valid point so this isn't so matt wood had to say this isn't a bad crane plane craft survival film with sharks thrown in um he also thought the same with you the char characters are likable apart from the obvious dickhead um decent effects um another again a single location movie which i don't like but this is all right there's enough action that keeps it ticking i would agree i yeah. think they did a really good job i don't know if something like this would ever actually happen 
if an air pocket could develop in a plane. But you know what? Fuck, I was here for it. It didn't really matter. I was willing to yeah. just turn off my brain and be like, sure. Sure, this is well, what happens, right? And the fact that certain people were able to hold their breath for what seemed like 10 minutes. <laughs> right, and you know what? Maybe that's the case too, right? Who fucking cares? It's it's a shark movie. But at a 90-minute runtime, it didn't overstay its welcome. I thought it was way better than it was going to be. I enjoyed it. It's available to rent on all the streaming services. So Apple, Google, uh, I shouldn't say streaming, video on demand, uh, Microsoft Store, YouTube. And I think if you like this kind of action-y type of sharky you know, plane crash movie, like it's worth the money. Like it's a, not a oh, bad definitely. 2024. Like it's an entertaining 2024 film. So yeah, I'll say check it out. Yeah. And then uh, kind of continuing with that thought of check it out. Mm. Next movie mm. is, the next movie is my number one so far of the year. I fucking love this. Uh, this yeah, movie man. is Here for Blood. A 95-minute runtime. A rowdy pro wrestler struggling to make ends meet agrees to fill in as a last-minute replacement for his girlfriend's well-paying babysitter job. Upon arriving at the secluded family home, he meets the precocious 10-year-old Grace. What starts off as a quiet, a quiet night of pizza and video games quickly spirals into bloody, violent chaos as Tom and Grace find themselves fighting for their lives with an otherworldly cult of masked intruders descend on the home. So this is, I will say right off the bat, like, yeah, as I said, this is like my number one film of the year so far. Um, this reminded me a lot of uh, Psycho Gorman and the way it was presented with its ridiculousness and the bad guys and stuff like that. This movie was just so goddamn fun and gory and the practical effects were awesome. And you actually liked the characters and for once a babysitter movie where the person babysitting the child they actually get along right off the bat and start oh, the child man. automatically hating the new babysitter and i was so happy scott i can't tell you how happy i was that they didn't go down that other route i was expecting it so expecting it and like because it's that typical trope of those babysitter type movies saying nope they did not do that and this girl was just so adorable the guy that played the pro wrestler like he's just he was funny he was actually charismatic like it, their yeah. chemistry together worked really well yeah like this was just a fucking bloody gory hilarious fun time Feed me! Feed me! Feed me. <laughs> That's where I was like, yep, this is Psycho Gorman right here. <laughs> now, this is a Canadian film. So it was filmed in London, Ontario, Canada, and it was reviewed, what did you say, after the After Dark Festival? Yep, After Dark Toronto Film Festival. After Dark Toronto, which is a small film festival. Just so we're clear, that is not like TIFF. That's not right. a huge film festival. So... I thought this was fucking solid, and we aren't the only ones. Dave Bailey's given this a whopping four stars. Duncan McLeish has given it four stars. Tim Walker's given it three. Um, you know, Tim Davis, you gotta watch this bad boy, baby. Yeah, he's uh, he's wanting to. Like, he was struggling to find it when I told him about it. He's like, I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 only available on Google Play, Voodoo, Hoopla. Screenbox and YouTube. I don't know, man. This could be a shutter pickup. Oh, uh, this is a uh, Screenbox. So, uh, bloody disgusting. Oh. Uh, so, it's a Screenbox streaming rights okay. one. Okay. Mm. Like, but uh, I actually gave this four and a half. So, uh, nine out of ten. Nine out of ten stars for me. Yeah. Uh, fucking love this is a scotty movie all the way <laughs> i agree with you this is my top 10 too this movie was yeah. fucking awesome like it again low budget done well like again we are seeing a low budget film put their money into their special effects where it counted all the characters are affable um the plot moves quick everything moves quick it's just fucking mint yeah this is like a I've... fucking mint 2024 film and i even looked this guy up just to see if he was like a professional wrestler in real life like from a different indie yeah. scene or something and no he's just an actor like and i'm like well i can see him as a professional wrestler in real life he was excellent sean yeah. roberts i believe is his name yep um hope Canadian to see actor. Him in... yeah i hope to see him in more stuff i know he's been in like Resident Evil, he's been in Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, Taking Lives, I Love You, Beth Cooper. He's actually done a variety of different stuff um, when he was a kid as well. He was in Black Panther. So he's actually had some some stuff that he's done, probably not main roles or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, so he probably did background stuff. He's good. I hope to see him in more things. And 
definitely I hope to watch, see other people watch this film this year because it's definitely something that people should check out, especially if you're a fan of like Psycho Gorman, um, Kids vs. Aliens last year. I think this is right up there with a really, really solid good film. So, oh, yeah. Like, uh, I'm going to say this now. I will be shocked if this is not in my top three by the end of the year. So. Oh, I agree with you. It'll probably be definitely not in my top 10, top 20. Yeah. Like, this was a good fucking movie. I agreed with you 100%. Uh, you know it's not a good movie, though? What's Pray the for the Bride. Oh, really? I was hoping no. it'd be at least something, because I was no. going to watch that one next. No, don't. Your but life will be better. But it's Tubi, Heather. No, there's a reason why. <laughs> so a group of friends at a bachelorette party are stalked, tortured, and murdered by a masked figure who forces them to face a long-buried secret. You know, sometimes you watch movies to stack your numbers. <laughs> and that's what I did here. Because I knew going into this with that synopsis that it probably wasn't going to be great. But Heather, uh, it's the pseudo sequel to Bury the Bride, really. It, oh it, no, it has nothing to do with Bury the Bride. <laughs> Bury the Bride was an Oscar nominated film in comparison to Pray for the Bride. Okay. This is like Lifetime with a little bit of horror. That sums it up. You know what I mean? Like this chick gets married. For some reason her fiance had died before. Now she's marrying somebody else. Her friends all go away together and there's a big secret they've all been keeping. Ooh. And it's going to be discussed. And all the actors in these films, in this film, were all from fucking Hallmark films. You ah. click on their background, and they've all been in, like, a love to remember. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, or Monster High the movie. That's what some of the <laughs> other So, hey, you know what? Not to shit on them. We all got to start somewhere. Our, from straight A's to XXX, it's a sugar and spice holiday. Love struck cafe, likes cats and dogs. So if you are Lance Lanford and you're looking for something to watch with your wife, <laughs> just for your wife though, right, Lance? Not for you. You never watch these movies for you, just for her. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, Pray for the Bride is available on Tubi and it is a torturous 90 something minute runtime. And this Tubi, one, sorry, go ahead. I was saying, and this one is a Tubi original. Sure is. And, uh, is. Like most Tubi originals, Tubi is the lifetime channel of horror movies. Oh, man. It is, but you know what? We are here for it, aren't we, Scott? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, we are. Um, Then I guess we can jump into the next one. Yeah, you, you. this is a British film as well, filmed in it London. It sure is. Soho. Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> shout out to UK for our time that we spent in London together. Um, Luckily, this didn't happen to Kate. No, Kate and I were actually in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you found the black the, rabbit we're two of the fucking chicks that's us anyway. <laughs> all right so yeah this next film is called uh midnight peep show it's a 94 minute runtime with tagline sometimes you just can't look away an unnamed madam operates a unique peep show that caters to its customers deepest desires fears and sins tonight it welcomes a businessman with a unique connection to an extreme fantasy website Soon he will become a witness to three stories of victims that found the website. It's only a matter of time before he's made to pay the ultimate price for dabbling in the dark side of desire. Mm -hmm. So this almost sounds like a Skinamax movie, um, but this is like a horror anthology. Um, basically, he's got three stories, including the wraparound, if I'm, co if I'm remember remembering correctly. Um, yeah. But yeah, for a movie called Midnight Peep Show, there's... Little to no nudity, um, which is, you know, which would made it easy for me to watch it work. But yet, um, like, a lot of Very sex. sexy stuff, yeah. Yeah, but, like, sex in girls just riding dudes in chairs. Yeah. That are tied up. Yeah. <laughs> um, With all their clothes on. Yes. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's how that goes. There's, like, a whole bunch of committed relationship sex going on in here. <laughs> yeah, and adultery. And, just, and adultery and, yeah. yeah. Right. This was, uh, yeah, this was, like, interesting uh, anthology, though. Like, um, a lot of these stories kind of gave me uh, Tales from the Crypt vibes. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Like, a bit of sexiness with a bit of comeuppance. Yeah. Except for the middle story didn't have comeuppance. That one just kind of had a dark ending. Um, But... Yeah, I found each of these stories to be very interesting and fucked up. 
especially the fuck Mary kill and the final story. Yeah, um, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, it's, it's basically just yes, yeah, it's about this website so I, called. I did the Black laugh Rat. during Fuck Mary Kill. I did think some of the lines in that were funny. <laughs> oh yeah, like the the story itself, I really enjoyed, and like yeah. a lot of the stuff. But it was just that ending, though. Just eh, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, like there was I. I think the first story was very creative, and I feel like had the majority of the budget put into it. Yeah. And then, like, the wraparound, I still don't quite get. Like, Scott and I talked about it yesterday about what happened to one of the characters. And I'm still, like, that was so unclear to me. Um, Like, I just wish they had been clear on what the ending was. I felt like it was too, like, artsy. Right. No, I get that. Right. Um, I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. It was average. I would say if you really like watching anthologies and you want something that's sexy but not sexy... Like, indicate sexy, but not super sexy. Right. Like, you want to watch a chick pole dance with a bag on her head? Um, <laughs> yeah, because that happens. That happens. Uh, she does okay. She definitely did level one of pole dancing because she does all the fireman spins and shit. I could do that, too. That was me, um, actually. And then Kate was <laughs> the hot one getting the drinks. <laughs> That's who we were. And we were killing Matt Wood. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Matt? Watch the movie. You're going to see what's happened, what will happen to you next time I come back to England. Be prepared. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If you like that, it's worth a rental. But, like, I, I don't know. Nah, 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 nah. Watch it for free if you can find it for free eventually. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a free watch. Like, it, it's an anthology. It had some uh, interesting stuff to it. Um, I think I liked All Hallows Eve Trickster better as the better anthology I've seen so far this year. But this one wasn't bad. It was just, yeah, another one to add to the watches. Oh, hey, and that's what it comes down to, right? another one to add to the watches and we have one more in our list of 2024s heather is gonna take it on yeah you see it right so amelia amelia hirsch is in this one oh Uh, yeah so walden dean is a court reporter whose mind who witnesses all types of injustice in the courtroom after discovering he has a terminal illness and repressed anger deep within him surface and taking justice into his own hands. I, I don't know if that's correct completely, but I'll go with it. This is this was picked up by Uncorked. And mm-hmm. I will tell you right now, you're watching this movie and you're like, I'm Emil Hirsch and Uncorked. My God, they got a gold mine here. <laughs> this is a good story. I enjoyed Emil Hirsch in this and the role that he played. Oh, he's a good actor. Um, There's some good actors in this. And I enjoy trying to solve the mystery of who was responsible for some specific killings that were occurring. Um. This had a little bit of a Dexter vibe to it, but okay. not. But he's not a serial killer. But it had a little bit of that Dexterish vibe, like vigilante shit to it. Um, it's worth a watch. It is a little long at 101 minutes, and it is a little lifetimey. But I felt as like a thriller with some pretty cool torture scenes. We'll call it. It was well done. Okay. It's well done. It's it's for uncorked. This is probably their like cream of the crop. <laughs> Like, if we were just looking at all the Corked movies, it would be, like, Walden over everything. That is like, fair. definitely the <laughs> film that they managed to pick up that will probably make them some money. It was it was decent in that area. So that is available on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Microsoft Store, YouTube. And, again, if you kind of like what I'm talking about and you know that this is going to be, like, an Uncorked film and, you know, and there's... <sighs> I don't know. There's a little bit of lifetimey parts in it, but then again, some really, really good stuff. Check it out. It's definitely worth your time. If that sounds like something you'll enjoy. Nice. And all we right. made it to the end. Yes, we have knocked out all of our 2024s. I think I counted there was 22 2024s that we covered. Wow. See, this is what happens <laughs> when we record once a month, and then this, and then a whole bunch of movies get dropped that we have to watch. So. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> there was nothing for the first couple of weeks there, and then all of a sudden, bam. Nothing, and then it all came out. Um, I don't know. Do you want to go next with your with your one here, or should I go? Sure, I can do my older watch. Uh, my older watch is. Actually, uh, I put the wrong uh, year on it, but it's uh, 2023, not 2022. Um, But it's a Netflix original called Leave the World Behind. And this stars uh, Julia Roberts. Oh, yes. uh, Mahershala Ali, Ethan Hawke. And I'm just trying to go through and make sure there's no one else I'm forgetting. 
Nope. Oh, and Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Kevin Bacon's in it too. Uh, but the synopsis is it's 138 minute runtime. From the synopsis, there's no going back to normal. A family's getaway to a luxurious rental home takes an ominous turn when a cyber attack knocks out their devices and two strangers appear at their door. So this is about a family that wants to leave uh, the hustle and bustle of the city to a like uh, getaway Airbnb and uh, two strangers appear at their door and the strangers are who they say they are. They are the owners of this Airbnb and they... Uh, just so happened to show up right when a cyber attack happens and everybody's cell service is gone, the uh, power goes out, TV goes out, like everything just starts falling apart. And, and it basically just shows uh, how fucked we are when we lose all these electronic devices and connections to our world. And uh, what happens to our world when shit like this happens? Because that means our defenses are down for our countries and all sorts of scary shit. So this is like another one of those, this shit could happen and it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> but I found this to be a very good, interesting, well-acted movie. And uh, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke do an amazing fucking job. Everybody does an amazing job. Nice. And it, yeah, I highly recommend this movie. Well, I appreciate the feedback. Sorry that Mickey's all of a sudden decided to bark in the background. Oh, no like worries. Fucking he's giving his dog. opinion. I know. He's like, me too. The world, leave the world behind. I've been wanting to check it out. So I'm glad that you are sharing it with us today because I uh, was thinking of watching it. So this is good to know. Yep. That was definitely more of a real world horror there than the typical horror that we watch. Hmm. Appreciate. Appreciate. Well, on the, uh, on the realms of pools... I guess Instagram heard me, and I saw a, a clip from this film called 12 Feet Deep. Oh, it, yeah, I meant to watch this stuff. Yeah, that came out in 2017, so I got our good friend to find the movie for me. And so Tobin Bell's in this film, very briefly, hmm. very briefly. He's he's not in it for much. He was definitely in it just to be like, hey, guys, Tobin Bell's in the film. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the chick from The Descent, so Nora Jane No One is in this. Um, so she was also in The Descent, as okay. well as Ant Alexandra Park, who was in Carnifex that came out last year, um, which some or a couple of years ago is the one, the creature feature. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she was in that as well. I I really enjoyed this movie. The, the premise to this is, you know, of course, you have a little bit of a sense of disbelief. So these young ladies go to a public pool. And through a series of unfortunate events, very kind of Final Destination-ish, they get stuck under the pool cover. Um, oh, okay. I think yeah. I have heard of this. So, yes, of course, like you're probably wondering, well, how the fuck would that happen? It provides a series of events where you could see how something like this could happen. Um, okay. Basically, the, the synopsis is they're the last people to get out of the pool. They end up dropping their stuff so the person who's closing the pool can't see them. They end up going into the deep, deep end that is dark where, you know, I guess this the person can't see that they they lost a ring and they're diving down to where the filter is to get the ring. Um, it's her engagement ring. Her sister basically took it and threw it in the pool because she was being a dick. Long story short, and the guy closes the pool cover. And as they come up to the surface, the pool cover is closed on top of them and they can't get out. And a janitor who's working there comes by and she has a criminal history and there's a negotiation that occurs. Hmm. Right. So it's, it's, you know, a reason why I wanted to bring it to the table, because even though it sounds like it's silly, it had a better plot point than night swim. <laughs> okay? like, like this was something where you could be like, sure, I can turn off my brain enough to be like, this could happen. And then how are these two young ladies going to survive? Right. And what they do to get out of this situation, it's probably fairly accurate to what someone would do if they were pushed to these limits. Oh, for sure. So, you know, it's an 85 minute runtime. It does not overstay its welcome. Dave C from the Exploding Head podcast gave it three and a half stars. Um, there's no other podcast. Oh, Chris Jericho, who's also a podcast listener, gave it three stars. And I think that's fair. Like Wait, I Chris Jericho, the Chris Jericho? No. But can, <laughs> he's Canadian though. And he's from out west, but he's not that Chris Jericho. <laughs> um, I do think the 
this movie's worth it. So, Scott, I'd be interested in you watching it and hearing your thoughts on it. And it's only 85 minutes. Um, it's it's survival horror in a pool done well. I think you remember we watched The Pool a couple of years ago. We did do oh, a pool God, yeah. about the alligator in mm-hmm. the pool. Um, so I think this one is probably one of the better ones. Okay. For, um, check it out if you get a chance to. I think you'll you'll find it interesting at the very minimum. All right. I will definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, so I think that wraps up everything that we watched and covered. We covered it all today here on Friday Nightmares. As always, your premium choice for... 2024 slash 2022 film releases slash UK films that we just fucking promote. Plus the Irish board, <laughs> the Irish board film board who we totally gave shots out, shouts out to. And uh, decent indie films. Yeah. You come here for that shit here on Friday Nightmares. This is what we dig into. Yeah, we, uh, we, we search the dregs of the uh, wastelands that are Tubi and Shudder, and we try to find you some gems that can be worth watching. Well, we're very lucky as well to be part of people's screener packs, so we're able yeah. to get um, a lot of BODs as well. Um, we're very grateful for that. You, you know, we'll see what happens this year, but overall, there's some light going on. Um, we brought to the table a couple of films that we thought were really, really excellent, and some that, depending on your personal preference, maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. And then exactly. we brought some that you should just not bother with. So, yep. you know. They can't all be hits. You can mix bag here on Friday Nightmares. So we will be back again in a couple of weeks, um, I guess, when we have something else to share. Yeah. I don't know. When, uh, when we will be back, I don't know, again. I guess it depends. Um, March is pretty quiet for me, so I guess it all depends how much we watch. Yep, I was going to say, it depends on how much we watch. I'll say the only thing I got probably going on at some point will be uh, – Connor's birthday. Oh, yeah. Why don't you make him watch some of these horror movies for his birthday? Like the really bad ones. Make him watch. I them. totally should. <laughs> right? You'd be like, son, we're going to watch Night of the Explorers. And what you should never do in your life is go to these. Is he there? You keep looking to the side. Or who are you looking oh, at? No, I keep seeing something upstairs. I can't tell though. Oh, no. Is it? Is it like a zombie? Is Might there be. an attack? I know. It's spooky. It's Erica being like, what shitty film does Heather and me want to make me like now? <laughs> All right, Erica, we're going to watch this movie called 12 Feet. It's about girls that get locked in a pool. She's like, fuck it, Heather, this bullshit. Well, she'd probably, I'd just be like, babe, it's better than Pool Party Massacre. <laughs> it's better than Quicksand. Tell her it's better than Quicksand. Uh, yeah, that right there. Yeah. Right. And the one thing I will say about the ending of 12 Feet is that I'd be like, yeah, at that point, I'd be fucking tired, too. And I'll let you assume with that. And I'll let you watch that. And you tell me what you think. All right, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon. We're getting this this watch train going. Imaginary's coming out soon in March. Yep. Uh, next theater release that's supposed to be big. Fuck, we'll see how it is. I don't know. Um, not holding my breath on that one. I didn't get a special screening for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Yeah. So I'm going to have to wait for all the other fucking commenters for when it gets dropped. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, well. We'll get to oh, it. Oh, bother. Oh, no bother. Oh, bother. Slice your fucking neck open. Anyway. <laughs> we are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, as always. Um, if you're interested, they do have a Patreon where you can come on and support fellow podcasters like myself and Scott, <laughs> so myself, just me, not Scott, and yeah. other podcasters that bring creative content to this channel. And if you haven't become a Patreon member yet, we got one question for you. What, who, huh, <laughs> why, where, <laughs> what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? <laughs> What are you waiting for? Because I'm pretty. You know, look at them now. It's like Mickey heard you. So you know what they should do. Speaking of the movie you talked about on Shutter, imagine. Okay, it's 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 America. Trump has taken over. All the magnets are making everybody wear red hats. Oh, no one is allowed to get any vaccines. Measles has overtaken the United States of America. <laughs> there is a safe house. <laughs> and polio. We brought back polio yes, as well. Polio is back. It, right? There's a safe house. But the only way you can go in it if you're holding a camcorder and you have poor lighting. Yes. 100%. Do outwatch. This, this, safe, this safe house was used for polio and vaccine. Polio and measles victims from the 1800s. 
also served as a cotton farm during the slave trade. And we're going to be paranormal investigators. And it's a social political film. You're welcome, Shutter 2025. Oh. I just can't. What the fuck are going to come out? Guaranteed, there's somebody out there right now being like, absolutely. That absolutely sounds like a found footage, political, haunted house shaky cam um unreliable narrator film that we can so like anti anti mask anti vax film that we can totally create and yes. everyone's going to fucking love fuck covid that's old news let's bring back measles and polio let's make fuck this yeah. shit really let's bring scary back the bubonic plague even better scotty and then the rats from the bubonic plague come out of the walls Yes. Oh my god, this is perfect. So, best movie ever. Oh my gosh, maybe I'll just have the Titanic float by too, just as like extra like randomly the Titanic shows up. And they're like, but how's the Titanic here? And we'll be like, how's there a plane underwater in the ocean that has an air pocket? Stop and how's, looking for answers. And, how, and how is the world round? Checkmate, globe <laughs> enthusiasts. Flat earthers are here, and it's true. Oh, even better. No, you know the reason why the Titanic's there is because the Ice Age has... No, global warming has finally overtaken. The Antarctica has melted, except for this haunted house. In this political warfare that people are dealing with, and the ghost ship of the Titanic goes by. And all the, cons it. And all the conspiracy it. theories come true. <laughs> Lizard people in Hollywood... Uh, uh, birds are really drones. Yes. Yes. Birds aren't real. So let's yes, let's bring it all back. Awesome. And you all were worried about COVID and fucking vaccines for that. Yeah. <laughs> now you've got real problems, motherfucker. You got the worst <laughs> fucking 2025 horror film that's gonna come out. Tagline. Like, and you thought COVID was bad. <laughs> right? Like and like Here's the thing, Scott. We've seen enough movies where I'm like, that is fucking 100% possible. <laughs> Sad but true. Like, we're joking. But as we're joking, I'm like, oh, yeah, totally. I could totally see a plot device with, like, it becoming, like, basically the purge, super, like, fucked up America. Absolutely. We got our whole bound of anti-vaccine and disease movies. So now let's bring back the weasels, weasels and polio. And the weasels. Like, <laughs> and the weasels. And there's weasels as well. <laughs> They're and gonna then, have a weasel stomping day, like Weird Al song. What did you? What was the other thing we talked about? And then the haunted shit that's going on in the house because it's from the victims of polio that didn't, <laughs> and they're angry now that you're not getting the vaccine because they didn't have the vaccine either. There's gotta be a haunted doll in it too. Oh, we gotta just throw that in for some shits and giggles too, right? A doll that helped the kids get through polio. All through, all through found footage and someone starts playing a Ouija board that's floating on the water because of the ice caps melting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my god, please stop with these fucking films. Alright, can we just get back to, like, good old... I don't know. Like, let's see more of things like, what was the wrestler one that we just talked about? Here for Blood. Here for Blood. Or, you know, fuck you pharmaceutical companies in your testing. Let's get exactly. to that. You know, let's, let's have more midnight sh peep show of people fucking with their shirts on. <laughs> Uh, like let's stop with found footage like all i could think of was you with the found footage film i was talking about scott when it's so dark like i'm like this is what scott's talking about mm -hmm. and i was watching it on my laptop like i wasn't even watching it on my phone and i couldn't see what the fuck was going on i'm like this is exactly what scott scotty's talked about over the years yeah this is exactly what he's fucking this is, talking about. this is why i found footage i have to judge it very harshly right like but i love it but I judge it harshly. Use a light so we can at least see what's fucking going on. Exactly. Right? Anyway, we will be back again uh, before I leave for the UK, which will be coming up. <sighs> and then we're going to be hearing all about that when she gets back. And I'll be going to France. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Man, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hi, attention. Oh, oh, martyrs. They're like, what the fuck is wrong with this shit? Oh, 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 croissant, croissant. <laughs> big up, big <laughs> I'm be like, have you guys seen the Advent Calendar movie? They'll be like, yeah, it was Trey Terry Beatty. Terry Black. I'll be like, oh, okay, we thought it was bad too. Anyway, we'll be back soon. <laughs> more 2024 watches. So in the meantime, do you have anything to say to the good people, Scotty? Uh, the only thing I have to say is thank you for sticking with us, like as always. And uh, just remember, whenever you run into a Frenchman, just go, ho, 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 ho,
Oh, oui, bag, baguette, baguette, croissante, croissante, mademoiselle. Oh, mon dieu. And until next time, kitties. Au revoir. C'est bien. <laughs> Good night, all. See you soon. <laughs>